I have a question for you. What is this? I mean, what is this? Looks like a leaf, right? Let's take a closer look. It's actually a butterfly, an Indian oak leaf or dead leaf butterfly. Now, what makes me go wow here is not only the fact that its upfolded wings look exactly like a dead leaf, but how did it evolve to look like something other than what it actually is, a butterfly? This is known as mimesis. There are many other leaf mimicking creatures such as the leaf-tailed gecko, Cryptophyllium westwoodi, and the Sestella catadid, to name a few. Now, resemblance of surroundings, as it is known, is quite common in the animal kingdom. Lions, tigers, frogs, fish, snakes, spiders, birds, all sorts of wildlife have adapted this type of camouflage to hide in their natural environment. But some creatures have evolved to be quite creative when it comes to not being noticed. The buff tip moth, say that three times fast, looks like a small piece of broken branch. A little story how it got to this point in its evolution. A very long time ago, there were two little moths sitting on a branch in a tree. With their odd colorations and markings, you could almost say that they looked a bit like very small pieces of broken branches. Along came a hungry bird and perched on the branch next to them. Examining the two, he was a bit perplexed as they sort of looked like pieces of wood, but one of them, not so much as the other. So, he decided to give that one a little nudge with his beak. It moved. Pretty sure he'd just found lunch, the bird snapped it up and flew away. The other moth then crawled away to find a mate. And so the story goes for the next 12 million years. This oversimplified story of why certain creatures have survived to this day and age is called mimesis. And there are many other factors that have aided in the evolution of the creatures that we see today, including ourselves. Migration. Climate change. Genetics. Crossbreeding. Extinction events. And the main ingredient, time. A whole lot of time. Much of life on this planet has adapted and changed over an incredible amount of time. Single-celled life on this planet began approximately 3.7 billion years ago, and it has been thriving and adapting ever since. Let's have a look at some more examples of how Mother Nature has helped some of these creatures adapt to avoid becoming lunch, or ambush lunch. What's the advantage of having owl eyes on your wings? Well, it's pretty hard to ambush something that's staring at you, right? Especially if it looks like a predator itself. Now, I get this too. Over millennia, the genus of this particular butterfly have had dots and circles with different characteristics, and the ones that look more like owl eyes were less likely to be eaten. They reproduced, and we are left with today a butterfly that has quite distinct looking eyes on its wings. Similar story with these guys. Most small predators won't attack something that looks like a snake. Another predator mimic. But hang on a minute. What about this little fella? Not only does his rear end resemble a snake's head, when he feels threatened, he raises it to physically imitate a snake and he expands it to make the appearance more threatening, including widening of the mimicked eyes. Now it's one thing for natural selection to favour a creature that has evolved to look like another species. But what makes me go wow is the fact that this creature seems to understand what is going on with his backside. Can natural selection be that multifaceted? Not only have the appearance of another creature, but act like you seem to be aware of the fact? These next three creatures have something in common, and the third one is quite a craftsman. The spider decorator crab, also known as the velcro or harlequin crab, attach materials to themselves from their environment, such as living sponges and corals as camouflage. Some species actually attach noxious organisms such as the stinging sea anemone and noxious algae as a defense mechanism. Were they taught this? No. We have to blame mother nature, evolution, and of course, time. The trash bug, or junk bug, 
also known as an aphid lion, is not very big, only about three quarters of an inch or 1.9 centimeters. But don't let his size fool you. This little bug is a voracious predator. He's not actually carrying around junk on his back. Amongst bits of leaf litter and twigs, there is also a collection of dead bodies, his previous meals. Hard to believe that he eventually morphs into a lacewing. Now you may have seen one of these hanging off a tree or a leaf at some point. The bagworm moth caterpillar. There is currently around 1350 species described and they are found right across the globe. Plant debris, leaves and twigs woven with silk make up the casings that these creatures call home. They attach them to rocks or trees whilst resting or in the pupa stage, but otherwise they are mobile. How do they get around, you ask? They literally drag their homes around. Speaking of mobile homes, some species are considerably more constructive, preferring a more up-to-date mode of accommodation. Now, with these three backpacking creatures, we could ask a naive, childlike question along the lines of, when did these creatures first begin attaching things to themselves? We could use my little evolution story again, but at some point, it starts to get a bit hard to fathom. How far back would we need to go through the evolutionary tree of life to find a time when these or their parent species were not lugging around items on their back? At what point in history of our planet did this not occur and why did it start happening? Okay, let's get a little bit more grotesque. The bird dung spider. Have you ever turned up to work after a hard night out and one of your workmates comes up and says, mate, you look like shit. Well, here in good old Australia, land of things that bite, we have a spider that looks like shit. I suppose mimicking bird droppings is a good way to avoid predation from birds. The females are around 12 millimeters and can lay up to 13 egg sacs with about 200 eggs in each. Do the math. They are large marble brown colored spheres, each about the size of the female herself. They are silked together, beneath which the spider may be found waiting for prey. Their diet mainly consists of male moths, which it hunts at night by mimicking the pheromones of female moths. The males are much smaller than the females at around 2.5 millimeters, and during the day this spider may be found sitting huddled on a leaf or branch in a quite exposed position. Its coloration, markings, and immobile posture fools predators into thinking it's a blob of dung rather than a meal. It even surrounds itself with some messy webbing and a few dead insects to add to the overall effect. I want to show you one more of nature's oddities. Now this creature's got me baffled. I just can't apply my little evolution story to this one. The Chinese hourglass spider, a very rare species. Between the years 2000 and 2016, only six such spiders have been spotted in the wild. Found in the eastern provinces of China and as far north as Sichuan, this arachnid was discovered primarily in caves. Although a farmer in Sichuan province found one in his garden, he initially thought it was a valuable ancient seal. Which brings us to his unusual anatomy. It has a very distinctive plate or disc on its abdomen, which can be mistaken for an ancient seal or coin. When it burrows into the ground, this part of the spider is all that's visible. When small prey, like an insect, would step on the disc, the spider would then shrink its abdomen to allow the prey to fall into its burrow. Why eat out when you can stay at home? The males are a little over 20 millimeters in length, whereas the females grow from 26 millimeters to 30 millimeters. The fact that it is a type of trapdoor spider, and also being a nocturnal creature, gives weight to the fact that it has rarely been seen. Because of the rarity of the Chinese hourglass spider, they are very expensive pets. In 2021, they were selling for $3,860. So, if you're after a pet spider with an unusual rear end, you better save your pennies. Thanks for dropping in today, folks. If you want to see some more amazing creatures, this video here will delight you with the fantastic dancing talents and iridescent colors of the amazing peacock spider. And this video here will amaze you with the clocked speed of the fastest predatory move of any animal on the planet. 
And if you enjoyed today's video, I'd love it if you give that like button a whack and subscribe and leave a comment too and let me know what you think. All that stuff is going to help the channel grow. Anyway, you take care and I'll see you soon.